So my name is Una Hatton. Um, I have been teaching at San Jose State since 2013. And uh, I teach in the Communication Studies Department and I am a Performance Studies Scholar, which means that I study performance, but it also means that I look at everything that people do in their everyday lives as performance. So thinking about, um, you know, these days, everyone's talking about their personal brand or their identity on social media. So this idea that we perform our, our identity is not really mind blowing to people these days, but um, maybe, you know, 10 or 15 years back when I was in graduate school, that was something that uh, was sort of more new to people to think about. So, um, so that's sort of my broad area of study. And this project, um, this uh, about this play Ramona is something that I actually started working on back when I was in graduate school in um, I think 2006 or 2007 is when I first started working on it and um, so it's been it's been a long time that I've been with Ramona. There are simultaneously three different histories being commemorated in this play all at the same time. And those histories uh, are not always um, consistent with each other. So there are things in those histories that there are some internal contradictions in the production because of um, across these different histories. So that's what the article is about is sort of the interplay between those three narratives. It's interesting because there's um, there's like a very small pocket of people who have this sort of intimate knowledge of the play and the history of the play. And then there's a sort of circle out from that who sort of think they have intimate knowledge of the play, but maybe don't have as much. And then there's a circle out of that who's like, oh, yeah, I've heard of that play. Something about someone named Ramona, you know, and so it kind of goes out like that. So in this like tiny, I shouldn't say tiny, but in this comparatively small circle in the center, you know, there are people who like there were a couple board members who um, left the production after the new script came out. They felt like this was heresy. Like this is like, you know, it was a huge deal for some people in the town because for them, one of the most important things about the play was that they had been doing it for so long. Like that had become what was so great about it. <laughs> and so the idea that they would have a new version of the play was like, why would we change this? Like the whole point is that this is, you know, a tradition. And um, actually the, the man who was sort of the unofficial archivist for the play, who was this uh, historian, you know, who kind of recorded everything about it. He was, he also sort of left, like he disassociated himself from the production because he felt like, uh, these really, these things that are like really minimal changes, like there's a character named the Senora, and then there's a scene where she confronts Ramona and she has this table with all these jewels on it. She kind of holds up the jewels and she's like, Ramona, if you want these jewels, you won't elope, you know? And um, in the new version, the, the, the table was moved downstage several hundred feet. And the archivist said, no, the table should never be there. The table needs to be up on the platform where it always was. I'm, I, I'm, I'm leaving, you know. So, I mean, there were other things around it, but it was essentially these things where, you know, people became very, very attached to the way it had been. And so there was major scandal, but it was, you know, for like 30 people, you know. And then out from that, there were people who were like, oh, yeah, I heard it was different. And they went and they were like, oh, yeah, it was better. But, you know, I'm not sure... I'm not sure how many people actually know the script as well as, um, you know, this very inner circle to be able to say what's substantively, what's substantively different. Not an 
an expert on curriculum, but my suspicion is that the curriculum in California around state history is still really bad. And let me emphasize that really bad. Like I think it's, I think it's probably still largely from a white perspective, largely from a colonial's perspective. And that um, although, you know, we've, we've probably moved away from some really problematic things around like, for example, like Christopher Columbus or something like that, there still is a real oversimplification of, you know, the mission system, um, the, you know, the genocide of the Indians, the, the, you know, the responsibility of the federal government in uh, the extermination of, you know, the indigenous population. So, um, so all of that, you know, absolutely, it's, it's so essential that that, that all of that be addressed in the curriculum. And um, I would say that's, that's not really addressed in the play. I would say that there is a there has been a small baby step towards addressing that. Um, but um, but what's so interesting is that is that I think a lot of people involved with the play think that it does. They think because the play has a sort of a tragic ending because Alessandro is murdered, that that the play um, is telling the story finally. And in fact, you know, this production, the, 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 um, the majority of the support, financial support for this production, according to the director, comes from the local tribal councils. So, you know, there is this way in which there is local indigenous support for this play because there's this idea that it does tell this story of um, the violence, the racialized violence against indigenous Californians. Uh, not Californians, because it wasn't California, but, you know, indigenous people who were in that region at the time. So, um, so I guess some people would say, yes, it does. It does have content that that should be integrated into our state curriculum, but I would say we could go much farther. We could go much farther than Ramona went. <laughs>